Hello and welcome my pterodactyl bounty hunters. How you doing this wonderful day here? Today we're talking about the door gunner. The top five towers that you should be using in combination with the door gunner. If you guys don't know what the door gunner is, by the way, it's part of the new ability of the Special Operations 5th tier heli pilot. It allows us to pick up towers and attack with them while they're picked up. Not just move them around, attack with them while they're over here. So for example, we could grab a boomerang over here. We can set it a BFB really quick, and we can use our heli pilot to boomerang this stuff. It's pretty cool. So now the question becomes is what is the top five things that we should be using the door gunner with? There's a lot of towers that we can use over here, and all of them aren't necessarily that effective. In fact, a lot of them will actually be ineffective. So before we get to the actual uh, top five list here. I've got to I just got to talk to you guys about the limitations of this There's a lot of limitations. So the more we understand the better off we're going to be First and foremost it cannot pick up everything um, For example, you can't pick up monkey aces. You can't pick up heli pilots. You can't pick up temples or uh, You know farms you can't pick up heroes Which really really sucks and you also can't pick up up in the top uh, left here fifth tier towers so all fifth tier towers out of the window don't even consider them don't even think about them they cannot be door gunnered at all you cannot glitch it or trick it at least to my knowledge at this point even if you do the quick upgrade right away right right when it's trying to you know go over pick it up doesn't pick up the fifth tier so what that means is we cannot include any of those guys at all also another limitation that's sort of fair but still part of the game here is the fact that you can't use abilities while you're picking some guy up. So, for example, if you pick up a Blade Maelstrom, you can pick it up, and that's fine, but then the ability is going to disappear. It's no longer going to exist. There is a minor way around this, whereas if you use the ability first, then pick it up, it still will abilitize. So if we pop this Maelstrom back down here and we do it like this, let's, lo let's uh, lock this guy in place down here so I've got time to work. We're going to pick this guy up. Ready? We're going to pick this guy up. And then right when he's about to hit it, we're going to go three, and we're going to start using our ability. And that is going to allow us to have a mobile Maelstrom. Even though it's for a split second or whatever, it's still part of it. So with all of that being said, what is our top five door gunning towers in the game? Coming in at number five, we've got the Recursive Cluster. So that's a bottom path fourth tier tower. And whenever you want to get this guy, you usually want to go for a top path heavy bombs in addition. And when you pick this guy up and you start popping balloons, man, it's going to be insane. For example, let's send out, I don't know, something pretty difficult like round 40 freaking nine here, guys. Keep in mind, we do have a fifth tier tower here. But this is a mobile freaking cluster cannon annihilation beam right here. Go everywhere on the map and these balloons are going to do nothing to us, man. Holy crap, that is powerful right there. Delicious. Don't forget our helipad is also black and or lead popping power over here. Uh, or no, it's just black popping power and zebra popping power. And we've got the lead popping power for this guy already. So it's pretty much got every type of balloon popping power besides camo detection over here. And that just absolutely owns. Highly, highly recommend you guys use this cannon over here. It's going to give you the most beautiful, beautiful popping power ever. It's even going to be pretty good against mob class balloons over here. Not because the recursive cluster is all that good, but because when you combine these guys together, they just end up being a powerful duo. And that's exactly what we want over here. A powerful combination that works out wonderfully. Coming in at number four, we've got the Overdrive Tack Shooter. Now, the reason why this is so interesting is because he's actually pretty cheap. You can actually afford this guy in a reasonable level at a reasonable place. Of course, getting the fifth tier is not exactly easy, but you pop this guy in there, he's going to do a lot of damage. For example, let's try it out. We're going to send out round 49 again, but this time, instead of actually letting it go on Pursuit, I'm going to either lock him in place or make sure that I have him on my uh, follow mouse here. And I just get in the right position. And I think this is the way you're going to have to use him if you really want to do this properly. So let's see if I can make this all happen over here in a proper way. Around 49, again, very difficult round usually. A very big balloon level here. And you're going to notice, against all these ceramics and everything on top of each other, man, we're going to not dominate, but we're going to do a really, really, really good job on them by just getting right in the middle of the map here and just doing a lot of damage. So here we go, showing off we could even go to the very front here, just kind of sit on the screen exactly where we want to be, and we're going to pop them really, really good. In addition to that, you can also do pretty good Moab damage as well. So you can just kind of sit on top of Moabs and just annihilate them. The amount of projectiles you're getting on this guy is insane. But 
it does come with one fault here, and that's why it's only coming at number four. Putting them on pursuit kind of sucks. Getting in front of them is usually not the best thing ever. So if you leave them on pursuit, so just this is round 49 again here, guys. You're going to see the big difference between me controlling it and the computer controlling it. Now the balloons are going to start to get uh, quite a bit further over here. A lot, a lot further. Uh, yeah, they're not going very well at all, actually. In fact, we're almost going to lose? No! No! Yeah, it sucks, man, but when you don't control it, you're going to end up getting overwhelmed by balloons that normally wouldn't be that big of a deal for you at all. And these regen balloons are going to actually kill us in a real game. That sucks. That's not fun. That's why he only comes in at number four on our list. Even though he's very powerful, you do have to control him. One other thing I want to say about this guy, though, before we move on, is that uh, I think... Most people are probably confused about how the uh, the whole pickup situation works on whether or not it buffs things that are getting picked up or not getting picked up, or does it take the buff from where it used to be? For example, if we buffed a uh, you know taxone taxer you know in range over here and then we picked him up, does he keep that buff as we you know pick him up and move him away? As far as I understand, he does not keep that buff. But what you can do is if you put him in a spot where you know you're going to have him in a you know be there a lot, for example, something like this. And then we buy our primary training or our radar scanner or something like that. The taxone should be able to see the camo balloons. So our heli pilot can see camo balloons as well. But now we're going to have our tax shooter able to see camo balloons as well. And to prove it, we're going to go like this. Um, and you can see that when we're in range here, we can see camo balloons. But if all goes according to plan here, when we get out of range, for example, if I follow the mouse here, we should not be able to see camo balloons on our tax zone but only on our heli pilot. But if we get back in range, we can see the camo balloon. So it's basically proven that it does affect it if it's in range here, but it's got to be in range while the heli pilot is picking it up. Kind of crazy. Very interesting to think about how you're going to end up using this to your advantage or not to your advantage. And uh, yeah, that's why it's coming at number four on the list. Let's move on to number three. Super monkeys are huge these days, man. Now, just so you guys know, there's a lot of super monkeys that can't get picked up. For example, if you get up to a temple, you can't pick it up anymore. Even though it's fourth tier, it's not pick upable anymore. But super monkeys are still extremely, extremely powerful. And in my last video, I showed you guys how powerful the quote unquote dark champion can be, especially if you get that laser blast, plasma blast combo. I know we can teleport now, if you guys have not seen this, by the way. He can teleport across the map into special different ways. But. If you get him all the way up over here and you actually pick him up and just kind of let them go on pursuit, which is kind of nice, you can pop a lot of balloons, man. I mean, check this out. This is like round 85 here. This is a late game hard round that should be very, very difficult for us to do anything to, but we're going to straight up annihilate it. This guy is just a powerhouse, to say the least. And having a super duper mobile anywhere you want to go, uh, you know, uh, great Moab popping power tower into great balloon popping power tower, including automatic cam detection and distraction backwards. You just get this just awesome, awesome tower here that's just going to basically do everything for you. The only problem is that he's expensive. And that's why he's got to stay at only three on the list because he is so gosh darn expensive. Um, he could still be overwhelmed and everything. He's not an all powerful, all knowing, all being tower here. He could still be overwhelmed by something like round 98. But, um, did I set around 98? I thought I did. There we go. Uh, uh, but at that price point, I mean, affording this guy in any real level here, it's probably not going to be easy for most of us here. I think we're better off trying to use a different tower to just kind of get us going in the game before we realize, oh crap, I spent all my money on this combo over here that may not bring us to the very end of the map here. It may not bring us to the end of the game. But even so, look at this, man. We are actually doing a great job on Run 98 and doing a lot of popping power overall, especially with these really, really nice straight lines. We're literally getting the max damage out of our tower over here. But absolutely wonderful. The only downfall is, again, it's kind of expensive, guys. So play it, uh, play it safe, and if you can make this happen, you're going to dominate. But until that point... Might be a little bit struggleicious for you, to say the least. And here we go. Beating round 98. Will we get no lives lost here? It's getting close, man. I don't know. I want it. I want it. Come on. You know you can do it. 
And there we go. We do take them down. Wonderful. Another great thing about this guy, by the way, is the fact that he doesn't really need that many buffs to make him quite powerful. Like a lot of other towers, they need buffs. You know, they need the alchemist. They need some uh, uh, village power and stuff like that. This guy doesn't necessarily need that to make him all that much better. And that's why he kind of works well inside of the heli pallet here. He's already good. We don't need to power him up and buff him and do weird things that we can't do anymore with this guy inside of the heli. Coming in at number two! Now, it took me a long time to figure this out because, honestly, I, I was going between two of these guys. There's another super monkey and a submarine. A submarine? What? Yeah, you can lift... Really? Well, this changes everything. Yeah, you can lift up water towers, too. Did I mention that? If I didn't, now you know. So you can pick up water towers, too. So what would be the best water tower to pick up. I'll go Buccaneers and subs here. I mean, what, what, what would be that? Well, how about the freaking sub here? But how about the nuclear submarine, the Bluntonium reactor? The biggest weakness to the fact that the reactor exists is that he doesn't have good range or good positioning on a lot of maps, and that has changed entirely with this strategy, guys. You can keep a submerged nuclear sub in the air with this guy it's absolutely insane. So we're going to set out round 49 again, just to show you guys, again, a, a measly low price tower here. What the heck he can do. We have a, no joke, we have a mobile camo detecting, camo undoing, destructive bastard over here. Literally, quote unquote, infinite balloon popping power here. And I love the fact that he can actually decamoize balloons. It makes him awesome. The thing is, is that leaving him on Pursuit may not be the most effective, and putting him on uh, Follow Mouse here is probably better for you in the long run. If you can maneuver him around properly, he's going to do way more pops, but even so, look at him go, man. Look at him go. He does have a pretty big weakness in the fact that he can't pop, you know, Moabs very well or anything like that, so this isn't going to be very helpful. Our, uh, our Heli Pellet's doing all the work right now, as you guys probably can tell. You know, he's, he's, we're still going to be able to pop Moa, but later on in the game when we have to fight bigger batter balloons, it's not going to mean very much to us, right? So, I love this power, though. I love the fact that we can take a water tower, bring him out, and let him do ridiculous things now. I highly recommend you guys, at the very least, check this out on some different maps and see if it's going to work out well for you. But like, I'm saying, like, like I said, guys, if you leave this on Follow Mouse and you put him in the right position here, uh, round 49 is just going to be an absolute breeze. I mean, look at this. Putting a sub wherever you want? Are you kidding me? That is awesome. Keep in mind, you can also kind of leave him in a certain spot next to a village or something like that like that to increase his range to make him do a much, much better job overall here. So, um, straight up owning 49 here all the way across. Even these regen balloons here, guys. We got one red balloon. Well, not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. And he's taken down. And that's why he comes in at number two on our list. Cool, interesting, fun, and a freaking mobile water tower. I love it. And coming in at number one on our list, you know it. The most powerful tower in the game, the Zero, Zero, Zero Dart Monkey. No, I'm, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. That's, that's, not, that's not the answer. It's the Super Monkey! You can't beat the Super Monkey, man. He's so, so good. But realistically... We gotta talk about this guy and talk about this combo here. It is beautiful. Absolutely stupendous. Guys, if you haven't seen it by now, you can go for a Sun Avatar with either super range and extra range if you really want to, but realistically, go knockback, go ultra vision. We got a camo detecting, um, distracting send back tower here that can also be everywhere on the map. I mean, what, 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 what could get through this guy, man? Nothing. Let's just put him on uh, uh, Pursuit. And, great thing is, you don't really have to worry about it. Leave him on Pursuit. He's going to aim. He's going to do everything for you. You don't have to actually micro or do anything. It does all the work for you so, so easily here, man. And it looks kind of cool, too. I mean, look at it. Like, literally, like, yellow beams kind of coming out of our our uh, Chinook over here. Special Poperations. Absolutely dominated. Dom dominative? It's just an absolute dominator. <laughs> That's what it is. So, yeah, I mean, it's crazy, man. It's got uh, some weaknesses later on in the game and everything. But for the price you're paying, I'm mean, only paying, what, $35,000 for the Sun Avatar over here. We could pop around 90 DDTs over here without very many issues. We could pop, uh, you know, I don't even know what's a good round here for us to test out. Like, um, 
I don't know, let's see. Let's just see what 94 is. I don't even remember what 94 is, but a crap ton of balloons here, man. I mean, I don't think we're going to beat them all, but if, if we do, even more freaking fantastic. This is round 94, guys, and our sun avatar at 30000 something dollar tower is doing this much damage. It's just crazy. It's seriously crazy. Think about where, where else you could pop this guy down and do this much damage. There's just no chance whatsoever. Even if you do a perfect job of kind of maneuvering this guy around and dropping him off somewhere else with the support chinook, um, it's unlikely to do any real work here. But he's great against the balloons, as you can easily tell here. He's pretty good against the Moab class balloons and everything, and he hits exactly what he wants to hit. And I think that's the main thing about him that makes him so, so great. Uh, he hits the exact balloons he wants to hit, kind of keeps on going here. And, uh, of course, we are going to struggle near the end here. We are going to start to lose some lives, and once we these Oh My Gods actually hit, we are going to start losing them for sure. But overall, still by far the best combo in the game. And, of course, that's my opinion. So if you guys have a different opinion, let me know in the comments below what you think is the best tower to pop in this guy right here. What do you think the best door gunner is? Um, I would love to hear it. Leave a comment below. Let me know. And if you enjoyed this video, please, please, please press that like button for me. It's very, very much appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't. Look at that. I can't believe you still doing a good job here, man. Like, I know we're going to lose some lives eventually, but wow. Just wow. Like, the, the ridiculous amount of distraction and everything that we had there is awesome. And he finally started to lose here on round 94 with no other help. That's just crazy. We didn't even build villages or anything like that to help this guy out. But... Uh, again, no true weaknesses to this guy, but still not all powerful. You know, but for the money we're spending on him, he does exactly what you want him to do, and he's going to be great. Don't forget, we also have special cooperation abilities, and we're making lives here as well while we do all of this. So, keep that all in mind. We're going to be dominating this game right here, guys. BTD6 in a nutshell. Thank you so much for watching, and have a super duper delicious day.